that doesn't look right at all. <sighs> you ever try to animate something and you just can't get it to look right? And you're like, well, I don't, I don't understand. I think I understand it. Why can I not figure out the movement? Well, sometimes it is helpful to get like a video clip of something that you're trying to draw. For example, I'm trying to make this little monster do a kickflip on a skateboard. And I thought that was something I understood and could draw, but it just doesn't look right. So I feel like I need a reference so that I can look at that movement and ideally, it would be great if I could sort of draw over that, almost like a simplified rotoscoping type situation, just to get that movement of the board flipping. And then I could sort of stylize it to my own taste, if you will. The problem is, you can't import video into Adobe Fresco, and that's what I'm using to draw this, and that's what I like to do my animations in. However, I think I figured out a workaround in order to get some video clip-ish into Adobe Fresco in a sneaky way. But first, I need a video clip of a kickflip. And I know just who to ask. Hey, you called me. I have something that's really important that I need your help with. Okay. Uh, I need you to do a kickflip. Do you know how hot it is out? So it's I gotta be a good one. I want, I, want, I want some good pop. Okay, I'll send you a video half hour. All right, try to try to do it a little faster than that. <laughs> I'll get you an extra pop. Kirk sent me over a kickflip. Let's see if he delivered. I think he nailed it. This is exactly what we need. All right, so now I just need to airdrop this over to my computer so we can open it up in Photoshop. So you'll just open this up in Photoshop like it's a regular image or Photoshop file. And then we're gonna open up the timeline and then we'll just play it through. We can see it works fine. And then I'm gonna change the frame rate and bring it down to 12 frames per second, which is what I'm working in in Fresco. Then just confirm that this doesn't make it too janky. I do want it to be a little janky because I'm animating this frame by frame. I don't want a perfectly smooth video. We just wanna make sure we're not missing any of the key moments here. So the next step is we are going to go to the render video option, but instead of video, we're gonna choose Photoshop image sequence for the option as opposed to video file. What this is gonna do is give us all of the frames of video just in a folder. So it'll be like a flip book. All right, back at the iPad, opening up Fresco, we're going to get a new document here and we're just gonna do a simple animation sequence here. We're not gonna animate anything, we're just gonna write the numbers one, two, three. The reason we're doing this is so that we know the order of the frames when they're listed in layers for the next step. So we can just close this out, it's gonna save, and then we can head back over to Photoshop and then open up this file. Here back in Photoshop, you will see that file has already updated from Fresco. I love this back and forth between these two apps. It's very seamless and uh, one of the reasons why I like Adobe Fresco so much. Have you seen the video where I talk about why I like it so much? Uh, I'll put a link to that. So now we're just gonna go get our folder with the kick flip animation sequence and we're gonna drag that into this to get it all within this motion layer. So we just have to hit return a bunch of times to place all of these PNGs until we get them all in here. So because we have the one, two, three frames, we can tell that the sequence pasted in backwards. So we need to fix that, but that's pretty easy. We don't have to do this manually. We can just go ahead and delete our one, two, three frames. We don't need those anymore. And then we can go up to layers and arrange and then flip them around so that they're going in the correct order and that's all we have to do. We can hit save, close this out, and then we will go back to our main file, which houses this motion layer, and you will see in your uh, layer menu that it's been updated with these new images. So we can save this file, close it out, and then head back over to our iPad, where this file will be ready for us to use as a reference. So here it is in Fresco. We can see that our motion layer we hit play and we got a kickflip. We've got a video sequence in Fresco. 
I know it's not really video, but it looks like a video to me and it's gonna serve our purposes. So I'm gonna resize this to get it to fit the size that I want, full screen for this character. And when I transform it, I'm gonna choose all frames. So it transforms the whole thing, not just one of these frames. So first I'm just tracing over the main kickflip sequence of, of just the board itself. And then I can use this to sort of build the rest of it around. So on a new layer, I'm going to do a very crude tracing of the body, just super rough and quick. I don't care about the form and the details. I'm basically just trying to get an understanding of the way the legs and arms move and the way the body bends in a very simplified way that I can apply to my character that doesn't have all of the movement of a normal human body. It's got little arms, little legs, not a lot of detail. There's no joints in my character. So I just want a rough, a rough guide to work from. So I'll take what I've created, move that over to the center, and now I will paste in the sketch of my dog character, get him positioned properly, start to tighten him up a little bit, and then, you know, I'll do a quick little three frame sequence that I can repeat a bunch of times so I don't have to redraw everything. And then I'll just sort of keep moving things around and adjusting so I can reuse as much of that sequence as I need. But then when the character is getting, you know, popping up, I'm gonna move the face around and change the eyes so it's a little bit more dynamic. Maybe it's looking down, wiggle in the ears a little bit. And then once I have the body in movement in a good place, I'll go in and bring in that skateboard deck, trace that over, bring it in, and piece it all together. So once I finished with that whole sequence, I was feeling pretty good about the overall movement. I just felt like it could use a little more bounce, a little more expression. So I went in with the liquify tool and just started pushing things around to exaggerate the movements and just make it a little more loose, a little more wiggly add some character to it. And I'm pretty happy with the results. I don't think I could have gotten this perfect movement without Kirk's help, so I really appreciate that. And you know, you could use this for a number of different ways. You could bring in some other animation to add to it or adjust with it. Or if you're trying to like figure out a walk sequence or anything else, you could just record a quick video and then bring that in there and use that to trace over to help you get the movements proper if you will. So here's the little Boston Terrier side by side with Kirk. You can see the movements are the same, but how much, you know, the character is different and changed, but still based on the video. I think they're fun to see side by side. I hope you like my little doggy too. If you didn't know, in addition to this frame by frame stuff in Adobe Fresco, there's a lot of different motion tools that allow you to set things on motion paths and grow and shrink and rotate and it's really cool. You can have a different timeline on every layer. So we could take this sequence and then put like a moving background on it and have this, this little doggy skating through a whole scene. We could have them ollie over something. It'd be pretty great. If you want to learn how to do that stuff, I've got the perfect video for you. You should just check it out right now. I think this has been a good talk. I hope this little trick helps you out in your work and I will uh, see you soon. Okay. All right, thank you.